I recently purchased a new MacBook because my motto is, if it's less expensive than a watch, then it's not that expensive. It's a terrible motto to have. But I found myself needing something to hold not only my new MacBook, but also all of my other things. So like many of you in this situation, I went down a rabbit hole. Bluteshoof is a relatively new company. Their artisans have been making handmade leather bags in France for the last 10 years. The company focuses on using more sustainable materials to make their leather goods, like full grain vegetable tan leather and cotton canvas, that is sometimes organic cotton. Aside from the tanning process, every other aspect of production is done in their warehouse that houses about 20 artisans that use old school machinery to produce their products, which is really cool. The warehouse has this big open floor plan that lets in a bunch of natural light and it's just absolutely beautiful. And I have to say for about 20 artisans, they produce a lot of products because Bluteshift's catalog is huge. They make briefcases, satchels, messenger bags, camera bags, backpacks, business bags, tote bags, motorcycle bags, laptop cases, wallets, and a whole bunch of other stuff. But today, I wanna to talk about my Postman Eclair bag in Navy. The Bluteshift Postman bag is available in three different sizes. And if you get the large size, it could be worn more like a backpack because it includes an extra strap. Now the small and the medium variants have four different colorways available, but if you purchase the large size, you only have two color options. What I have here is the medium postman bag in navy. Now I'm about 5'8 and 135 pounds, so I can wear this like a crossbody. but for most men, this is a shoulder bag. The leather strap, however, can be removed and it can also be carried more like a briefcase. The postman bag and most of Bluteshift's designs are inspired by the late 19th and early 20th century. So all of their products have this old world charm to them, which happens to go very well with my personal motif of marrying vintage elements with modern ones. So I guess it makes sense why I was so drawn to the company in the first place. The bag is made out of a full grain, water resistant vegetable tanned leather with brass hardware and an interesting use of felt, but I will come back to that in just a minute. The Postman's a full grain leather, so naturally it's a bit thicker. When they were designing the bag, they made the choice to leave it completely unlined and the rough out on the inside of the bag has been sanded down to this smooth, almost velvet like finish. I think this was a great choice because the lack of lining helps contribute to the overall weight of the bag and stops it from being too heavy. Speaking of the leather, it's soft, supple, and malleable right out of the box. It doesn't look like it, but this bag feels like something that I've owned for years already. I get that the accompanying lack of structure might be a deal breaker for some people, because this isn't a bag that just stands up on its own. It might fall over if it's not propped up against something. Unless you put a ton of stuff in it and then it stands up on its own just fine. But the trade-off is that you end up with a bag that feels very comfortable on your body right away. And I stand by that statement. I like that there was no break-in period. With some of these full grain leather bags, they tend to be a little stiff, a little cumbersome and awkward when you first receive them. But this, it was already super comfortable in my body right away. It had a ton of character when I first received it, and I'm just really excited to see how the leather develops and ages over time. With that said, the straps and the buckles on the bag are made out of a stiffer leather. It's still full grain vegetable tanned leather, but it's stiffer than the rest of the leather used to construct the bag. Now, as far as construction goes, I think this is a nice harmony between that soft, malleable leather that feels comfortable while you're wearing it, but also has those more rugged and durable aspects that contribute to the longevity of the bag. It also creates this really aesthetically pleasing contrast, not just between the navy and the tan, but also in the different textures of the leather as well. All right, let's talk about the inside of the bag. So you have four major compartments, this front pocket where I like to keep my wallet and my cell phone when I'm not shooting on it. Then these two bigger pockets, which are actually large enough that I can fit my Sony camera in there and usually a couple batteries and my mic. So it's like my makeshift camera bag at the moment. I need a new camera bag. Next, I wanna talk about one of my favorite things about this bag, which is the felt sleeve in the center of the bag. 
Felt is such a great material and I honestly think it might be cheaper than wool and I don't see it being used enough. The felt sleeve cradles my 14 inch MacBook Pro perfectly. It's soft, it gives my laptop a little extra cushion, but it still keeps my computer from sliding all over the place inside my bag. And the best part, there's no zipper, so I don't have to worry about pulling my laptop in and out of my bag and potentially scratching it. Anyway, moving on. There's also this cotton bag on the inside that can be removed or relocated to the front or back of the bag. It's great for holding your keys and other metal things you don't want moving around and scratching your stuff like your MacBook. Uh, it also has the manufacturer date and the artisan who made your bag. This one was made by Natalie, so thank you, Natalie. You did a good job, I really like my bag. Then that brings me to the side pockets. So when I first received the bag, I didn't really know what I was gonna fit in these pockets. I noticed with Blue to Ship, they have these very minimalist designs, but when they have a design that they like, they either scale it up or scale it down. They have a 48 hour bag, which is basically a scaled up version of the Postman bag, and it has pockets large enough to fit something like a water bottle. My pockets on the other hand, can't even fit my cell phone or a camera lens. As I used the Postman bag more, I realized that the side pockets were a great place for things like my lighter, my tactical pen, my knife. But if I had one criticism, I think that the design overall would be fine without including the smaller side pockets. The Blue to Shuf Eclair Postman bag retails for just under $450. So if you were to purchase it, it's a substantial investment. And there's definitely some competition from other brands in this realm of messenger bag slash briefcase for brands like Satchel and Page and Filson, just to name a few. I actually considered purchasing the Filson briefcase, but I went in a different direction because they didn't have the color that I wanted available. And that's ultimately how I found the Blue to Shuff bag. Yes, my Blue to Shuff bag doesn't come with Filson's lifetime guarantee, but based on the construction and the quality of the leather, I feel like this bag should last me a pretty long time. At the end of the day, Blue to Shuff is still a relatively young company and they're still working on establishing themselves. All things considered, I'm pretty happy with my purchase.